Hey, welcome to the stream, everybody. Get things going. All right. Looks good. Um, everything looks good so far. Yeah, we're good. Um, all right. So we are, um, well, actually it's Sunday morning. Um, beautiful day outside. It's been really beautiful in Utah yesterday. Um, put some chicken in the smoker. Did some smoked chicken legs. They're pretty good. Um, but we, we need to take care of a few things before we get started. Uh, this week is ng-conf. Um, and so if you're in the, um, Salt Lake City area. Um, I'm going to go in um, Tuesday night. I'll go in to downtown um, to the conference and um, I'm going to, I'm going to go get pre-registered and then I'm going to go um, watch the Angular Community Meetup Lightning Talks. Um, and then um, Wednesday and Thursday, I will be at the conference. Um, so come say hi. Um, if you're at the conference, definitely say hi. Um, Love to love to meet you. Love to talk to you. Um, love to hear what you're doing. Um, so yeah, uh, ng comp this week. Excited about that. Um, that does mean I won't be streaming Thursday night um, because I'll probably be doing conference related stuff. Um, thinking about anything. I don't think there's anything else going on. So tonight and tomorrow I'll be streaming, um, and then. Um, Thursday, I'll be at ng-conf, so I won't be streaming. Um, yeah, I'm, right now I'm trying to figure out an interesting issue. So um, we, we upgraded to the latest version of Analog. And when I try to serve the blog, um, we, we run into some interesting issues. Um, and it has to do with one of the analog plugins. Things serve just fine, but there's this Nitro plugin that I'm not sure what it is. Um, I'm just checking on things in the background. Just It always frustrates me when I go to go live and for whatever reason, my internet decides not to behave. Oh, it's just a little bit scary. Um, Now it's just really, really slow. It doesn't even want to build. So that's fun. What is going on here? Um, so yeah, I was looking for the V Nitro stuff here. I don't see it. Um, so we wait for this to, well, curious what's going on here. Interesting. It's not even stopping my, not accepting inputs from me. That's okay. We can fix that. Go ahead and exit from here for now. Pop this up. And Grab a new terminal. Um, actually, let's go take a look at some. Ask man. That's crazy that my console host is eating up. It was eating up 10% of my processor, doing nothing. <clears throat> Oh, do I have another one running? My problem. Um, so I, I'm looking and I thought I saw, oh, I do have another terminal running. I've got two running. So let's see here. Um, there's probably a lock file. What is, there we go. So I've got four processes running from my terminal. Um, 
PowerShell. Oh, those are those are all fine. No, I think I'm I think I'm good. All right. Sorry about that. Um It should go really fast, and that's what had me concerned. There we go. Much better. So here's the error um, that I'm getting with the worker reload. Um, oh, look at that. It's, I think there's a bug in the code with the way they're handling Windows paths. I don't think that it's, I'm missing Nitro. I think it's the way they're handling the Windows paths in Nitro um, because I've got two C drives here, which is weird. So with this running, I should be able to see a .nitro directory. Um, this is saying dist angular blog. There's my dot nitro. Um, and npm analog blog node modules analog JS. And that's imported from Angular blog dist, angular blog nitro dev index.mjs. Here. So if we open this, um, we'll just open it with notepad and see what's going on. So inside of here, they're doing a file. Standard environment, node modules. So what's the offending file? It says it is analog Vite plugin Nitro at 1.0. If I search for Nitro in here, um, it goes a lot of this stuff down. Here's the nitro. Wow. Okay, that is uh that is quite the path here. So you know what? Let's let's just pop open um open web storm i'm curious what's creating that path because that is quite the path and i'm i'm really curious so here if i go to dist um let me go into nitro and dev in the index.mjs um, this is the offending path right here um, if instead of doing this, we go and we do the file that, and that is quite the, that is quite the import. Um, let's see if I save that. And then let's just see if I if I kill this and we just try to serve it again. If it rebuilds that file, 
I will see it here. Nope. Well, it might be frozen because I'm, I've got this file locked. Let's see what happens. That's interesting. So rerunning it freezes. Oh, because I've still got this locked. If I come back here. Yeah, I'm in the I'm in an interesting state where I can't even break out again. Um let's watch the disk directory and just see if it rebuilds that. No, this was built. Well, actually, we can take a look, right? Um, no, this Nitro file was built a week ago. Um, and so let's let's just delete this and see what happens. Uh, no. Oh crap! Cancel this. Um. Ah, uh, that was almost really bad. <laughs> but I had to check everything out again. Um, luckily I pushed everything just before we started. But um, so let's wipe out that file. Um. And now we'll get a new man prompt. Okay. So now if I do pnpm nx serve angular dash blog. Do I need to kill the cache? Is that potentially coming from a cache somewhere? Now things are behaving strangely. I want to see. I want to see where my um, CPU is going. So it's, that's interesting. I can actually bring this over here. Um, so if we look, this, this terminal is actually doing nothing. Um, but down here, Got these Windows command processors. I wonder if I kill all of these. I think I've got some stuff frozen. Um, yeah, and me killing that actually solves some issues. It's not listening to my arrow keys. Let's try again. Because the way the way that um, the, the way that the the shell that I'm using, the Windows terminal works, um, is it creates that command processor. Um, and so me killing it in the way that I was was probably leaving command processors hanging around. Um, oh, it's still frozen.
Interesting. Let's see what's eating up my CPU. Okay. I've got two console host windows going on. Um, we can see they're they're jumping around right now. I'll resort this so that it's not doing that. So again, my terminal is doing nothing. Um, These are doing nothing. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Wow, I've got a lot. <laughs> um, are you serious? You th you're going to... Why will you tell me that it'll become unstable? Um, that's quite the scary thing to put up there. I think I can just, yeah, hit the delete key. Wow, do I have a lot of console hosts going on right now? Can I not just select or, no, I can't. Man, what is going on with this? So something here has locked my, um, the way I'm killing stuff is locking things up. And this console host is what we use over here. So we'll go ahead and kill all of this stuff. Um, and see if that helps us out. This is why um, when people tell you to reboot your computer, um, it often works because there will be so many processes that are just left dead or in, in like a zombie state, right? Um, okay. Let's see if there are any other... I mean, we've got the... The terminal service. There's the command processor. Um, and there's my terminal. And so are my, yes, they are. Okay. Let's try again. Um, PNPM, NX, serve. And we'll try serving the blog. There we go. And again, we've got this weird import. So if we go look at our disk, this file here, again, we've got this crazy file. Um, really crazy file. So it's not that I'm missing a plugin or something. Um, so we've got this crazy, crazy, huge file going on, um, or this crazy import going on. And I'm curious, if we go look again here at our dist, so the 17th is today, Nitro was built today, dev. So this was built today, and what time is, is it? Yeah, it was built just now. So this file is our problem. And I'm curious, this is where um, I hope we can fix this, but if I just go in and I do file this, is that going to fix my issue? Because everything else is a file import. That one's just a really, really crazy import. Um, we've saved that. Let's go ahead and kill this. Yes. And um, we'll go ahead 
and drop back here and we'll see if that makes a difference. Oh, and I think I've got it open in WebStorm also. Actually, it didn't matter. Um, so there it is again. We're getting that same import. If I open this, no, it's just rebuilding that file. Um, and I don't know where that's coming from, where that's being built from. So. Um, we'll ignore it. Spend a bit of time trying to figure it out. At least I know where it's coming from. Um, so we can fix that. Um, or at least at least we can report it, right? Um, anyway, let's take a look because I found that even though we get into the state, um, yeah, the blog works just fine. Um, so the next thing we did um, is we added this slash um, articles. So if I hit articles, it should render my component, but it's not. And this is where I think the Nitro stuff is coming into play. Um, because here, if I if I hit a route that doesn't exist, um, you know, like the JSON route, it, it's routing me back to the home page. So that's expected. Um, but if I hit slash articles, we get nothing. Um, and the reason we get nothing has to do with our routing, I'm sure. Um, but if I hit like article slash one, then here's my article, right? Um, so we've built a dynamic route. And the way we did that is um, in, in analog, we've got file-based routing. So we've got the articles route here. And then we've got a sub, oh, I don't have a home. I don't have an index in article. That's why we're getting an empty route here. There's just nothing for it to serve. Um, so like the not found page um, is listing, um, you know, just things that aren't found. Um, we'll need to build like an articles page to land on. Um, so what we can do is we can go take a look at um, analog. Yes. Dot org. Yeah. So in the routing, um, there are different types of routes. Um, so the index routes um, are routes that have parentheses around them. Um, and then we've got like static routes that here. Um, and then you can create these route groups. Um, so routes can be um, wrapped in the same folder without adding a route path segment by, oh, that's cool. That's really cool. I didn't know that. Um, so I'm just learning something also right now. Um, that with file-based routing, if we wrap our routes and our, our folders in parentheses, then they get added to the root route. Um, that's really cool. That's a good way to to do that, um, so layout routes, um, parent child folder with the same name. Okay. So inside a products page, we probably need, we need to add another route um, that has the same name as our articles route. Um, and then when we do that, um, we can route inside of the, that route. Um, contains the parent page with a router outlet. So the, 
parent's products page TS contains the parent page with a router outlet. The nested this file contains a products list page. And product ID page. And then pathless layout routes. Layout routes can also be defined without adding a route path segment. Um, okay, so you can do the same thing here and catch all routes. Um, it's curious here. So route metadata, or we'll do content routes. To provide content with Markdown Renderer. App config, add the provide content function along with the with Markdown. So we'll be using this Markdown Renderer stuff too. Um, oh, so then you can just add a Markdown file. That's really cool. The diff highlight plugin. Oh, you can use diff. That's really cool. In a source content folder, here you can list markdown files, such as blog posts. Nice. Um, Using content files list. This is the stuff we're going to be using for our blog um, and was what I was going to be looking for. That's why I'm kind of getting. So here. Um, oh, that's cool. Inject content files. Oh, that's really cool. The analog markdown component, mermaid support, content subdirectories. This is all stuff that we're definitely going to be looking forward to. Um, but I think it was a route metadata then. Um, so this is where I learned how to do the redirect routes. Um, so at the top, you can just redirect to a specific thing. Um, route meta tags. So we could add metadata tags, um, route meta tags. Oh, that allows us to, that's interesting. Um, but that's not what we're looking for. Redirect routes. Nope, that is definitely not it. We've got our index route, we've got our static routes. Dynamic routes. See, here we've got this H2. Um, what I want to do so layout routes are defined by using. So this is a way that we can use new layouts. Um, what I'm curious about is if, if we go here to our articles and inside of articles, um, the other thing I learned, oh, is my NX not working? Okay, so now we've got that. So can I get NX to generate stuff? There we go. 
Um, so here we can actually, you can see it right here. We've got an analog application, a page, and some tests. Um, so here, if we generate our page, um, the name of the page to be generated. Um, so the page is going to be articles slash index. So it is putting it into the right place. It is putting it into the source app pages, articles, and index. Awesome. Um, that's the correct one. Whether the generated page is a redirect. Redirect paths need to be provided in the next prompt. Um, so we aren't a redirect page, so we're good here. Um, we aren't going to provide metadata. It'll do a full path match, that's fine. And the title of the page will be articles. Or blog articles. There we go. Um, so now it's going to create this. Um, so if I hit generate, we should see our index file show up here after it's done. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> and there we go. So with that in place, it should have rebuilt, and it did. Um, and so now if I go here, one of the following must be provided, load component redirect to or load children. What's it complaining about here? Main.ts, invalid configuration of a route. So we do have a component on that route. And this is something that I was noticing before. Um, okay, so there we go. Is that every once in a while it would get into this strange state. Um, so now if we go to articles. Um, and now it's not happy about the routing. What if I hit slash articles one? Okay, so this definitely breaks something. Um, I'm not sure what's what it's breaking, but let's um sometimes I had to just change this file for whatever reason. Um and then V would pick it up. Um and then if I tried to go to like slash articles, there we go. And then slash articles slash one. And I think that this issue is related to the Nitro issue. Um, and I think it's very specific to Windows. Um, and so uh, it's probably related to my setup. I also had some issues upgrading, but if we go take a look, um, so inside of here, if, um, I just do NCU format group. Um, and here we're just checking for any upgrades, right? Um, so we don't have any upgrades here. Um, so there, there aren't some new analog files for me to, to, to pull in. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, but for whatever reason, if we make a modification to the page and then go back, then we're fine. Um, one thing I would like to do is convert this page over to um, an analog file instead of a TS file. Um, 
So to do that, we just rename this. Um, and so it becomes a dot analog. Boom. And there we go. So now that we're an analog file, we don't need import the component. We don't need all of this. Um, and we don't need the default export. And instead, we add our template. <laughs> then we can just move this into our template. And we don't need this either. And this is the nice thing about um, dot analog files um, is this is a valid Angular component. This is now the index component. Um, and so if we go and refresh um, and we hit our articles, then our index page still works. And if we hit like articles one, then we're good. So <clears throat> I think we got everything figured out. Um, I was confused with this layout route, but what the um, layout route is actually talking about is if we want to create a special layout for just this route, right? So we've got this products slash whatever route, um, and it contains a, the, the products list page. Um, and so it contains the product ID details page, right? Um, and so what they're doing is, you know, they've defined this route, the products route, which is, uh, you know, it's going to, it's going to be, you know, the site slash products. Um, and if you hit that, because there's parentheses here, this winds up being the, the index route. So if you hit just products, you're going to drop into this page. Um, this bracket notation here is the way that we are using here to get the slash one. Um, so that, that tells you that it's a dynamic route and to grab the ID out of it. Um, and so doing that, they've got two products, right? And oh, they're even showing right here what I just explained. Um, and then they're adding a products page that contains the, um, the router layout. Um, and so, you know, they're just adding an H2 and then they're giving it the router layout. So whenever you hit this slash products, it's going to find this layout page. It's going to add it. And then it's going to, you know, use the products and product ID um, routes. And they will be routed into this layout instead of the overall homepage layout. Um, and so contains a slash products list page. Yep. Um, product details. Yep. So, um, that's how, that's how we would expect it to work. We're doing it just slightly different. We're adding the index and the articles here, but we don't have a layout page because we want to use, um, our app component layout here. Um, where we've got our router outlet. Um, One thing about this is it, this layout should have the header on it. Um, so if we look, if we go back to the, to the homepage, um, this is our, this is our layout route. What, what I should do is add, um, a router event so that when they click this, um, that it routes to um, it routes to the to the home page, right? And then um, the next thing that we could do is then when we're in the articles um, route that we would get, we could click here to come back to the home, right? Um, so to do that, we need to modify the header component. Um, And really, um, 
So with this div, um, we can do cursor pointer. Um, it's going to give us a, cur a pointer cursor. Um, and then the other thing we can do is um, um, we can add a route. Um, and to do that, we can go to angular.dev, right? Um, and you can add this to anything that's not even a, um, let's see, let's go here, the route. So you can do this even if it's not, um, even if it's not like a, an alien or a, a link tag, right? Um, so let's see, route. I'm building Angular apps. For some reason, Angular.io. So here, route, I think it's just router link, right? Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Um, so you can navigate to something within the, um, within the tag, right? So here we can, um, we can just add a router link that will take us to the the slash route um, and you can add these router links anywhere um, so you know here they're using um, dynamic ways of building them but this is what we're looking for is we want a router link on our on our div um, and that will allow us that when we click on it and we can just do router link equals and that, that'll take us to the home route. Um, we may have to import the router link um, from the route. Um, so this is, I mean, it's a directive. It's added in. I think it might be in the router module, but I, we may be able to import just the router link directive um, specifically exported from router module. So um, so it is exported from the router module. We may have to import it from there and then provide it. Um, so if we go back to our blog here and we refresh, um, we'll see that now we've got the hand and when we click on it, well, we inspect this. So the div has the router link. Let's, let's change that router link, right? Um, we can, we can test it. So, um, here in the header. Oh, I'm looking at the header. I'm not looking. Yeah, that's where I want to be. So here, if I just route to articles, um, that should tell us if our router link is working or if I need to do something to import it. So when I click, I'm definitely not getting anything, right? So it's ignoring that, um, which tells me we need to import something. So, um, and that, that makes perfect sense. So we don't need to do exposes. 
Oh, um, Josh Maroney actually showed me this too. We can take this exposes out. We don't need it anymore um, because we are exposing it up here. Um, although if I take that out, okay, it's not going to clean that up. Um, so the... Um, I don't think we need to add it to the metadata either. Um, we can just do right here. And these don't have to go, you can put these anywhere, um, but we can do import. Um, and inside of here, we can do router link. Yeah. Um, so now, so now we've imported the router link and, um, oh, we need to do one more thing. We need to go with um, an analog imports and that's going to allow it to, um, this tells it where to put it, right? So when I put exposes here, that's the same as putting it here. If I didn't add the imports and we, we can take a look at it this way, right? Um, so if I do this, then I have to have the met metadata. Um, and then I can say that, hey, this imports the router link, right? And that should fix our issue. Um, so when I click, I'm not getting, That div, it's, it's not picking up that click. So here, I do this and inside of here, I do, um, that 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 gonna work or am I breaking? Um, I'm semantically breaking this page, which is one problem. Well, let's just, we'll add a click event here. Um, we'll just say that when we click equals, and now we need to add a function for it to call. Um, and so we can say const um, um, header clicked equals um, there we go um, and we can even go like event event here um, and then our, our click event down here um, we can call header clicked um, and then pass it dollar event Right, um, and then up here we can just console.log um, header clicked with our event, and that should be good. And so now when we click, um, we take a look at our console, we can see that hey, we got our header click event, right? Um, and here, um, instead of injecting router link, um, 
now we can just inject router. Um, and so now we just need to grab our router. Um, and really, we don't even need it outside of here. Um, is this going to work? I'm curious about this because if I do router um, equals inject router, it's going to tell me that I have to run it in the injection context. Um, so um, here, if I do router.navigate um, and we'll add articles here, now we should see when I run this, yeah, okay, so we're getting that we need to be run in an injection context, which is awesome. Um, and that's the reason why we can't just throw this into that directory. We could run it in the injection context of the component itself. Um, so there, there is a way to do this. Um, you know, we, we could use the run in injection context. Um, but now if I click here, yeah, now it's going to articles. Um, I'm curious why my directive didn't work. Because I'm fairly certain Angular add router link to div. And maybe, maybe I can't add a router link to a div, but you can add them to buttons or, um, okay. Anchor tags and buttons is probably true. No, it says it can be added to a div. Well, there's there's one way to find out for sure. Um, we go to um, we go take a look at the code on GitHub, um, and inside of here we look for router um, link. So here's here's our router link tests. Um, so the tests should give us an idea of what we can do with it. Um, but even without the tests, if we go look at the router and inside of here in the directives, here's our router link directive. Um, and if we look at the selector on this, it should tell us what we can add it to. Um, when applied to an element in a template, makes the element a link um, that Initiates navigation, yeah. So, um, inside of here, you can use absolute or relative pass. That's fine. So, router link that. We, this is all stuff we saw in the documentation. Um, what I'm looking for, yeah, see the selector? Um, the selector doesn't limit it to just like an A tag or a button. Um, and so if, if this were limited to specific things, then typically what you would see is A and then the router link and then B, or, you know, and the router link and C and the router. Link. So um, it's not limited to a specific thing. So I wonder if I'm doing this wrong. So we know this one works. Um, let's try, let's try putting our router link back, right? Um, so router link equals, and here we're just going to go to articles. Um, and 
we'll leave the router stuff in, um, but we'll grab. And this is this is the one thing with um, importing this way is um, import um, router link. Um, yeah. So if we import this way, we can't group these together in the same um, import statement. So um, that's something to be aware of. But this should make our router link possible. Um, and you know, there's there's another way we can test this. Um, let's go back. And now when I click here, I'm still not getting the router link. Um, so one thing we could do is within here, we could just add an A, um, an A tag and just, you know, put click me on it. Um, and on this A tag, whoops. Um, we can add our router link. Router link equals and here we'll just add articles also right so now we've we've got um, a link tag in our header that will take us to the articles um so here we go here's our click me um one thing when i hover over this i'm not getting um i'm not getting any information down here um So that's one thing to be aware of. Um, so my router link is not allowed. Attribute router link is not allowed here. Oh, so it's just not understanding it, but um, so we do have the router link stuff here. Um, do I need to do providers here? Providers. router link this is the way this is the way you would do it um you know in classic you're not providers um this needs to be imports um, and maybe that's the maybe that was the issue um I was putting it in the wrong place. So now if I hit click me, nothing. Like the theme store is being injected here. Um, Should this be providers? This is where the import stuff is a little bit. Um, so like we can see here, this was added to the exposes. Um, um, oh, look at that. Oh. I think I had a problem. I think by having this in the imports, um, there was something wrong. Um, because now, if I do with um, analog imports here, and we take this off, um, so now we've got our router link. Um, So now if we refresh this, um, 
Yeah, now we're now we're navigating to index page one, two, three, four. Great. Um, and the click me, when we hover over it, we can see the articles. And now if I take out that a tag, which we don't need anymore. So there we go. Now if we come back, yeah, awesome. Um, so now the header itself, except for this part over here with the theme, will take us back to the home, which is a pretty common thing. Oh, hey, Marcus. Sorry, I got really, really distracted. Keep forgetting about the summertime time zone change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, it's still getting me too. Um, but yeah, I am excited for ng-conf. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you know, I, I guess there's a lot more people here now, but um, as I mentioned before, I will be going in Tuesday night. So if you're in the if you're in the Salt Lake City area, um, or if you're here for ng-conf, um, Tuesday night, um, the Angular Community Meetup is doing um, they're doing the the lightning talks. Um, so um, I'm going to go in Tuesday night. I'll be there for the lightning talks. I'm going to go pre-register for the conference then too, um, or not pre-register, but go pick up my stuff. Right, check in. Um, what I'm looking for. I'm going to go check in with the conference that Tuesday night. I'll go get my stuff and then I'll go um, check out the um, lightning talks. And then Wednesday and Thursday, I'm going to be there. So yeah, if you guys are there, come say hi. Um, love to see you. Um, love to hear about what you're doing. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, I wish you were there too, Marcus. This is going to be a weird NG comp without Marcus. Um, if you guys don't know, um, Man, Marcus, you started going to ng-conf a couple of years ago, right? Um, and um, it's kind of like a staple at ng-conf. Like everybody knows Marcus. Um, when you're at ng-conf, you're like, um, hey, do you know my friend? Oh, yeah, I, I talked to Marcus um, for like an hour last night. Like everybody talks to Marcus. Um, so it's going to be a weird ng-conf without Marcus there to talk to everybody. I'm still eating breakfast, um, but yeah. Um, so this now works. So let's fix this. I learned something. So the analog, so when you do this with analog, it's the same as in the, in the metadata here, right? Um, you know, we could add the exposes and the themes, right? Um, this one with providers, we're, we're doing a, pr a provider for this store at this level. Um, so this is adding it to the providers array. Um, and this is adding it to the imports. And um, by fixing that, then I was able to fix my router link directive, which meant other things would have been broken because of the way I was doing this. Um, Now we no longer need this, and we no longer need the router. Uh, we can pull the router out. Um, and there is an analog component that would be so nice to use, um, but um, you have to be on a pre-release version, and I'm, I'm not on a pre-release version um, of WebStorm. Um, I would love to run the pre-release version, but last year I ran into so many issues running pre-release. Um, they just told me, yeah, don't do that, right? Um, why doesn't it know what this theme is? It just doesn't understand the template syntax. Um, and that's why it doesn't know what the theme is. Um, but now if we refresh this, um, this, isn't going anywhere. It looks like it's broken because um, now we're routing back to the home page. Um, so the next thing I would like to do is get that header on the articles and the articles slash one page route, right? So that our site is pretty unified. And the problem we've got um, is that we added the header to the home page 
but the header really should be on um the header really should be on the um on the app component um so inside of here um what we want to see is we need our header here um there's our header um but we've now got an issue that we um that this component needs to be a flex layout so we can grab that from the home page here um so we had all of this stuff right flex um flex column overflow hidden we may have to grab all of that stuff and put it on the app component also um, no it's all there so we should be able to just add in our display flex and we're a flex column we've got that um, so since we're we're adding that class the one thing i would like to do is right here um, push that up there um, and so now our router sits inside of a div um, and i'm going to give this div um i don't need to give it a class um, we're not going to do anything with it but now our router is um inside of um it, it's inside of a div that we can we can make grow and stuff right um so it's flex flex column and so now if we go take a look um and let's go back to the home route Oops, that took all of it out of there. I didn't want to do that. So here we go. And now we've lost our header. Um, and the reason we've lost our header is one, I didn't import the header. But let's let's take a look at our markup first. Um, it looks like our markup's okay. Um, so if we go inspect. Yeah, so we've got our div and we've got our header here um, and our class is marked as that. Um, so it's interesting that if we look at this flex, our, this div is only growing to the size of the content. Um, so I think this div is the one that we want to move all of that stuff to. Um, so if we go to our home homepage here, right? Um, the only thing we need here is that this should be a block. So display block. Um, and then in our app page here on this div, we just add our class and there's that. Um, and then the other thing I think we want here is we want it to be a flex one um, to allow it to grow as needed. Um, and maybe we just want it to be a flex grow. Um, so it can grow, but we don't want it to shrink um, based on the content. Um, now if we look at this div, now the div is taking everything, so that's good. Um, but this content inside of the div, this home class, is only growing that big. So here's the div, and the div is definitely taking everything. Um, and you know, with the flex grow of one, like if we take that off, it's 
still growing, so we don't need the flex grow on that. This is not growing. If we do flex, no, we don't want flex grow. So it's just got to display a block on it. Um. And then the article container. Um, so we've got grid rows here. And if we look at this, we can look at the grid, right? So we can see this grid is definitely bigger than the overflow. Um, and I'm, I'm curious why that is. What is constraining this to this height? Um, the article container class has that. And then within the article container, right, we've got the main articles and the secondary articles. These are all randomly generated. Um, so the blog is the correct height, and we can see that with you know the the blue square. Um, this div, right? So the header doesn't take up anything, but this div, um, you know, the flex grow doesn't matter. It's just growing to take everything. That's fine. This home, oh, it's the home right here. Um. What if we do height 100%? Ah. Ah. That's our issue. So we're missing. Um, we're missing the height full. Um, so if we go here and we take this height full width full off, and instead we give it a max a flex grow, and then we go back to our home component and we add this stuff in again. Um, there we go, and there we go. This div now with the flex grow takes up the full size, um, and then this home component now takes up the full size. Um, but we still don't have the header, so we need to fix that. So we'll go back to the app component. Um, it was a good time for sure. Marcus, you have no idea how many people knew who you were. Um, it was just crazy. Um, I would see you, I'd be talking to somebody. I was like, Hey, do you know, Marcus and everybody knew Marcus. And they're like, Oh yeah, I sat at him at a table last night and we talked for a while or no, I saw him last night at karaoke or, Oh yeah. He just walked up to me and said, hi. Um, so yeah, there were a lot of people who knew Marcus. Um, Okay, so I didn't import the home component, right? Um, so here I need to import the home component. Um, and the home component um, imports, yeah, um, dot analog. I believe that's what I need to do. And now it doesn't like it. Um, and this was the issue that I was running into before. Um, so I'm, I'm curious if I can do this. Um, so I've got my router import, but... Um, here, if I do 
Um, so here on the head home page, you know, it was in the um, in the main article page, right? Um, is it the home page? Yeah, it is. Oh, I took out the import already. No, I didn't. It's right here. So you can see that the way we have to import this is um, with analog imports. And I'm curious if that's what I need to do in my app component. So here, if I do with, um, ooh, no. So here, if I do with analog imports, Does that work? It's still telling me that it, uh, no. It just completely removed that. That was not the right way to do it. Um, And it doesn't come from, oh, I'm trying to import home component. That's not what I want. I want header component. Header. So this comes from dot pages, home, and then header component dot analog. It probably helps if you do the right stuff. Uh, and now it's just not working. Oh, because I took it out. Um, Right, so here we would add our header component. This needs to be header component also. Header component. And here, header component. Um, but it's telling us that it can't find it. Cannot find pages home header component dot analog. Um, and it might be because, um, so we are in. source app, right? Um, and here we, we can get to dot slash data access. Here we're going to pages, home, and then here's our header component dot analog. Um, it looks like it builds there. I'm curious about here. Oh, I've really broken something. I wonder, do I need to add with um, analog imports? Does that work? Oh, so it can find it. The module this does not provide an export named header component. Um, let's let's pop this out and just see what's going on here, right? Um, so if we go look at pages header component. Um, Oh, it's calling it header analog components. Does 
this is the default export, the header analog component. Um, If I change this to be header analog components, then it breaks because I'm taking things out that we don't reference. Header analog component, does that work? No. And it doesn't work because if we look at the console, um, yeah, because it's a default export. Um, so I should be able to do import default as header component. So there we go. Um, there we go there. It's exporting it as the default export. Um, well, now we're getting somewhere, but... It's definitely not working. Um, I think we can also go this way and go as header component. And that should grab the default export, right? Um, Let's see, ES import default export. So export, so yeah. Oh, I don't destructure it. That's right. So here I can just do import header component um, from here because I don't destructure it. And there we go. There we go. And so now if I go to slash articles, that works. And articles slash one works and so we're good um so knowing how things work right um is a good way to go about it and then here if i click there it'll take us back um so that works um and the reason we have to do it this way is that when we look at the code, and we can we can see it here um, in the sources, it's it's exported as a default, um, and so um, trying to destructure this default, well, because this is a default export, this is the object that gets exported, um, and when we go and destructure this, there's no you know, there's no header component in here. Um, so instead, what we can do is we can say, hey, take, um, uh, you know, take what's exported um, and just call it header component. Um, the, the reason that the star wasn't working um, 
is that that was taking everything um, and it was namespacing it as header component. So I would need to have done header component dot um, header analog component down here and that should have worked just fine. Um, but now we're in a good place. And that's going to work just fine. So the next thing to do is, um, well, first of all, we've got this working. We worked through it. Um, and um, about a half hour. I didn't expect to, to be um, learning, um, learning new, new frameworks can take a little bit of time, right? Because you don't know how they're doing things. And the other, the other issue that we're running up against um, is if we go look at the analog site, um, inside of here, we don't really have, like we've got information on API routing, right? So um, one of the cool things about analog is that it gives us a way to wrap our API routes um, so we can use them for different types of things. So um, we'll probably be looking at this when we go use Contentful um, and then, you know, the, they add server-side data fetching too. Um, and then, you know, they go over how to set up SSG and SSR. Um, so, um, and then code generation talks about the schematics. So um, we've got NX schematics in here, right? So um, this is, you know, the stuff we were using for the page um, on, on how to generate a page. Um, and then after this, there isn't a whole, I mean, there's, um, you know, there's information about how to use NX and Astro and Material how to update and, you know, how to do your tests um, and, you know, how you should provide uh, or deploy. Um, but there's not a whole lot in here about the dot analog files that we're using. Um, and this is where, um, you know, learning a new framework and then doing, um, you know, pre-release stuff, right? Like um, the analog stuff is still pretty much an experiment. Um, and so there isn't a whole lot of documentation around it. Um, luckily, I've had people like Josh and Chow um, reach out to me and, and help me with stuff that I'm doing wrong um, or places where I particularly struggle. Um, but, you know, part of it is just understanding how web frameworks work. Um, and so you know, once once we dug into the actual component itself and saw that it wasn't having trouble importing the component, the issue was that we were having trouble. Um, we weren't grabbing the default export, um, and once we started grabbing the default export, right, everything works. Um, and you know, and then just some stuff around styling, um, but that's ever present. Um, let's go back to console here and then we'll dock this back to the side. Um, then we'll go commit this. Um, so in the app component, we added the header component. Um, yep. In the home page, we took that out. And here, um, this is us adding the, the, the link back to home. So we'll we'll do that as a separate commit. Um, and then that's us adding the actual index page for the articles. Um, so those will be separate commits too, right? Um, so here we moved um, header to template. Um, Git. Error. What? What error am I getting?
Interesting. So we can drop into a terminal here. Where's my terminal? There it is. So here we, we can do like a git status, right? You can see that. And now I can do a git commit. And here we can just say moved. Whoops. Um, and I created a mess. Let's, let's just, um, but we can put that back. Um, insert mode and add that back. And here we can just say uh, moved header to template. Um, and then we can save that message. And that worked. Um, so I'm not sure. Oh, wait a sec. What's going on here? Oh, uh, that's not good. I don't have lazy get installed. Um, so that it, it looks fine. So here, I'm ahead of the origin stream. I wonder if something just got messed up in my Git Kraken. OK. OK. Now, if we add, um, so here we can say we added ability to go home from header component that's working something must have just gotten messed up um, and then added um, default slash articles um, page arc Articles. Man, you guys have, like, there, there are certain words that I just can't type, and I don't know why. Um, but, okay, that seems to be working fine. I don't know what happened. Um, but I don't know if you guys have the same issue as me, but sometimes my fingers just get going, and things come out weird, and I type words weird. Um, so, yeah. All right, so we've now got the... Um, header component on all of our pages. Um, it would be nice to add links, right? It's um, so like if we look here, um, when I click on this, it would be really good if it would route to the slash article slash whatever, right? Um, and so we'll do that for the main article first. Um, and just close everything, close all tabs, and let's just bring open the main article. So here's our main article. Um, our main article has an input on it. Um, it's a signal. In it. Um, no, it doesn't have an article on it. Um, it doesn't have a signal on it. Um, or an input. It, this should be an input. Um, so we're going to change that over to input dot required. Um, and this should be of type um, article, right? Um, and create article. So if we look at the article model, See, I can't do it. Article model. Um, so this, it just returns an article model. So that's what we want. Um, 
this will just be an Arctic <laughs> article model. So there we go. Um, so now that's required. Um, and now we can go to the, um, no, it's the home page. So inside of our home page, we've got the article container. That's what we want. We want the article container. Um, before I do these things on stream, I should probably vet whether or not I can type the words, right? Um, so here we'll just do const main article equals create test article. That's fine. Um, and we can take this out too. This was just testing specific issues that um, required certain numbers of articles to show up on the screen. Um, and so here with the main article, we are going to need the article input um, equals main article. Um, and the interesting thing about not having the, uh, the help from the Angular language service and things like that is you learn just how well you know Angular versus relying on um, relying on your editor or your IDE to help you out, right? Um, depending on what you're using. Um, so now if we go look, we've got a problem. Input is not defined. You're absolutely right. Um, so up here, I don't need signal anymore, but I do need input. Um, and we don't have create test article anymore. Um, so there we go. So now we should have all of that. Um, the other thing we can do while we're in here is we can say with, um, and here we can say analog um, providers. Right, because um, that will allow us to take this out of the providers array. Um, so there we go. And now if we go look, everything's here. So we've got our main article um, and it's working again. Um, but the, the thing about this is now um, that it's an input, well, it didn't have to be an input. I just wanted to consolidate it and work with it the same way as all the other articles. Um, so we can just say, um, that we removed that. Um, and we did that, and then we did that. So this is us converting um, converting main um, main article component to use um, Angular signal input. So there we go. Um, and then the main article component, um, the, the last thing we did um, was um, uh, changed to use um, dot analog file import syntax. Um, and so there's, there's a small change there. And honestly, you may not even want to do that um, just so that you stay the same as ink, right? Um, I'm just mainly doing it to show that you can, um, but this syntax is perfectly fine too. And it matches what you would do in a component anyway. Um, so really it's up to you. And if you go read the, um, the MR um, that um, Josh put up for that, um, Josh and Brandon both make some really good points as to why each of their syntaxes works, um, but you know you can you can it's an either or it doesn't matter. Don't have to pick. 
do what you want. Um, so there we go. We committed that. Um, so now on our main article here, we want the ability to click. Um, And we probably don't even want it to be here. Um, just thinking about things. Um, putting the click handler here means that I've got to figure out where to do it. Um, and I don't know that I want to do it here. Because really, this, this shouldn't care. Um, just thinking about, um, I've been having these discussions a lot at work lately, and that's why my mind is kind of there. Um, you know, originally I went and I was like, oh yeah, we'll put the click handler on the main article. That's not necessarily the right place to do it. Um, and the reason for that is that um, really all this component should care about it's how it displays the article on the screen. It shouldn't care that it's clicked or anything like that, right? Um, you know, so so it's got, you know, we, we could argue that even the stuff about um, resizing it and darkening it don't belong here. Um, which is a good argument to make. A very good argument to make. So good, in fact, that I'm going to agree with myself and this stuff should not be part of the article. It should be part of the article container and it should be added here. Um, so now we're in case where there we go. Um, and so with that change, um, you know, we've still got the same stuff going on here. The other thing, um, Let's, let's tone this down just a little bit. Um, um, oh, that's why I can't do it. I think I can do it that way. Um, and I think now that I've done it this way, now it needs to be 1.02, and this needs to be 0 0.98. Um, that's why I chose the 5% breakpoint, yeah. Um, let's turn off this. Grid, right? Um, go inspect this. I'm going to turn off this grid. There we go. So, yeah, that's a, that's a much better change. Um, we'll do the same thing here. We're going to take this out of the secondary article also. Um, so here, all of this stuff, go here, um, and then in the article container, um, we can add a class.
And now we can see that we've got the same stuff, right? Cursor pointer, transition, and then we're doing this. We want the same scale. Um, and so one thing we could do is we could add a styles. Um, and so here, if instead of, um, we could just say, or this, we could add our um, article hover. Um, and our article hover class will apply the same transition. Um, so here we can just do at apply. Um, and then we can paste all of that in. Um, So there we go. And then here, now we can just say we want our article hover. So there we go. So now we've, you know, we've, we've made our, um, our class use the article hover. So now if we refresh this, um, we're not getting it. Um, if we go inspect, um, here we are here. We've got the article hover. Um, is it just a style tag? Keep forgetting which one it is. We'll see if it's just style. It is. So there we go. Um, and we're using the wrong one. We're using the big one still. So here we can scale this down to 1.02. And then here we can scale it, or we can scale it up to 1.02. And here we can scale it down to 0.98. Um, and that allows us to go up here also on the main article. Um, And now we can just add the article hover. There we go. And that makes it smaller and easier. The, the only reason that I'm doing this, um, and um, like Tailwind says, don't overuse apply. Uh, but the only reason I'm using apply here is that I want to use the same thing for both. So if I make a change to one, like if I want to go to like, you know, a 10% swing each way, right? Make it 10% bigger um, and then 10% um, smaller, right? Now I change it in one place and, you know, both of them, that's a crazy amount of change. Um, but, it, you know, it gives us that benefit to where we can, um, we can make, make that change. So there we go. A more reasonable change, a more reasonable grow and shrink, um, right? Really, we're just looking for a slight bit of feedback. We don't want, um, you know, we don't want to overwhelm um, our users with our animations. Um, you know, and we could even potentially look at um, like a 1% change. Um, because human eyes are really, really good at just picking up any kind of change, right? Um, and it just gives a little bit of feedback to the user. And, you know, even 1% is it, you know, it's enough that you get that, um, you get that, I don't I don't want to say visceral, but that, that's kind of, um, you know, it's, it's that feeling that, you, you know, the change you can feel. Um, and so we can see here, that we've got um, a good change, right? Um, it's just enough that, oh, something changed. Um, but it's it's not so crazy that you're just like, whoa, what, what's going on here? Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and commit that too. Um, so here, 
Um, so we moved the hover styling to um, moved it to main article component. and consolidated. Let's see if I could spell that right. Did I get it right? I don't think so, because it under, underlined in red. Um, oh no, it is right. Sweet. Is it? I don't know. Um, so we'll push that to, there we go. Awesome. Um, Okay, and, and the reason we're doing that um, is just thinking about like reusability of the component, right? Um, we may want to be able to reuse this component somewhere. Um, and if we want to do that, then, um, you know, having the hover, we, we may not want the hover effect um, when we use it someplace else, um, you know, it just really depends on what we're using it for and what we're doing with it. Um, but it comes down to thinking about, you know, what should this be doing? What what should be the scope? And really all I intend for these this article and the secondary article to do is just to take an article JSON object and get it on the screen in a certain way. Um, and so that's what we've done. Um, Anyway, why are we doing that, right? Um, and the reason we're doing this is so that we can go here um, and we can add um, an article ID, right? So ID, and we'll make the ID a string um, because it could be a GUID. Um, and we can take in the article, sure, but we don't really need to. Um, and here, um, we can just do, yep. And I don't think it's on, it's faker dot, is it now in string dot u? Yep. So faker will just generate a random string of, um, hex characters um, to impersonate a UUID. It's not a real UUID, right? It just is generating a random string of characters. Um, but you can see that it's going to generate something like that. Um, and actually, <laughs> I was thinking UUID, but that makes us have to put a UUID in the URL. Um, and I don't like that. Why don't I like that? So there, there are a couple of reasons for and against this, right? Um, so if we look at this UUID, um, this is going to become, um, we'll just grab this, right? Um, just make sure that, yep, I did. Oh, there we go. So what this does, if I do a UUID, because what I'm planning on doing is adding just, it'll be slash articles, slash whatever. And if we do it with a UUID, then it works just fine, right? Because the route doesn't care. Um, however, if we do like slash one, um, you know, the, the route is much smaller. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of the benefit is that somebody can remember, oh yeah, it was article 13 that I wanted, right? And jump right to article 13. With UUID, it becomes much harder, um, much more difficult, right? Um, because you can't really, I mean, maybe there's somebody out there that will remember this. I won't, um, but it, it becomes more difficult to share. Um, and, you know, maybe instead of this, the article ID 
um, become part of the text of the article. I don't know. Um, but in the long run, picking things like IDs to use can be an important part of your user interface, right? It really determines how this will be shared. Um, if I use this, they can absolutely bookmark it. If I use this, it will absolutely be unique. Um, I mean, the, the other way you can do it is do like, um, um, you know, month, year, or month, day, year um, as your um, article ID. Um, so like, you know, this one would be, um, maybe that's the way to do it. The downside to that is if they publish multiple in a day, right? So like if I made this like March 17th, um, 2024, um, if, I if I published more than one blog article in a day, um, then that would become a problem. Um, however, if that became a problem, then we could easily do something like, um, you know, dash one, right? Um, or, you know, dash two. And so we, we could have an incrementing number there that would, you know, be the article ID. Um, Right now, I'm going to leave it as UUID because I haven't used Contentful, and I don't know what Contentful is going to give me as an article ID. Um, and so, until I until I get to that point, um, you know, it 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 really doesn't matter. Um, but this is this is an important thing to think about, right? Um, is what do you use for your IDs? Um, and um, are the IDs that I'm picking um, bad for different reasons, right? Like if I do one um, and then, you know, the next article is two and the next article is three, what's the downside to that, right? Um, and the downside to that is that this becomes easily guessable. Um, and so say you have somebody who wants to steal your content or who yeah, basically they want to steal your content and they want to automate that, right? They want to use a screen scraper or something to do it. Well, by having URLs that are easily guessable like this, um, then it, it becomes very, very easy for them to build up a URL schema that they can feed to their, to their scraper. And even if article four doesn't exist, right? Um, but article five does, they don't care, right? They, they get the 404 and they move on. Right. Um, and so um, that's the downside to easily guessable. And, and that's the, it's the same downside where if I do uh, March 17th, right, 2024, um, it's, it's easily guessable. And especially if, if somebody who, who's interested in stealing my content is like, oh, yeah, he publishes every two weeks. So we just set it up to, um, you know, look for, a date pattern around every two weeks. And we just, you know, we, we build up this easily guessable URL. Um, and so uh, security is usually the reason why you don't pick easy IDs like this, especially for, for things where, um, where security really matters, where like PII is a, is a real thing, right? Personally identifiable information. Um, you should never make, um, you know, like, people slash one. That is not a good route um, because then people slash two, people slash three, right? Now people can easily go through and scrape your site and steal a whole bunch of information about people. Um, that's, you should never do stuff in cases like that. Um, with, with articles like this, you know, maybe it bugs me if somebody steals my content and tries to use it as their own, uh, but there are ways to handle that, right? Um, so somebody scraping my site, it, it, it's not, um, I'm unlikely to wind up in the news because somebody stole my blog articles, right? 
Um, I'm very likely to wind up in the news if somebody stole 50,000 social security numbers because of the way that I um, handled, um, you know, personally identifiable information, or, you know, if they stole 50,000 addresses or things like that. Um, and that, that's kind of my, um, that's my rule of thumb, right? Um, when I'm trying to decide, you know, when I, when I could go either way, uh, when I'm trying to decide, um, should I do this? Um, and I really don't have a good reason either way. Then I'm like, am I likely to wind up in the news? Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, that this is probably one of my higher <laughs> priorities. Um, if I do this, am I likely to wind up in, in the news? Um, and if I'm, you know, if I'm working for a company, um, you know, is that company likely to wind up in the news? And the scary thing about a lot of this is, um, you know, if you mess up bad enough, it is possible that you could be the one who winds up on the news as the one who made the mistake and is the one in court being sued by everybody. And so, you know, take some time to think about things like this. Um, they, 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 they could affect you um, here. Um, I think, I think we'll go with UUID mainly because I don't know what to do um, at this point because I don't know what we're going to get, but it's going to give us the ability to build out the, the skeleton and the framework before we add real content. Um, yeah, that's, that's the main reason why I'm picking it. But also, um, I mean, UUIDs are incredibly difficult to guess, right? Um, I mean, somebody could generate, um, a random UUID generator and, you know, start hitting random UUIDs. But the, the search space is so big that for them to get anything reliable would one rely on, you know, maybe you don't use a cryptographically secure, um, UUID generator. Um, and so they could figure out how to seed theirs to generate UUIDs. That's, that's a, real possibility if they care enough about your data. Um, but you know, that, that requires a much more knowledgeable attack than um, just one, two, three, four, five. Right. Um, so anyway, um, just some things to think about as you're, um, you know, it, it's a junior and maybe even senior level. That's not that big of a deal, but as you start moving into like staff and architectural roles, um, those are definitely some things that you, you need to be considering, right? Um, and, um, you know, protect yourself, protect your company, um, make sure that, well, and you're protecting people too, right? That's the other, that's the other piece that um, I wasn't even talking about, but, um, you know, people don't want their information out there. Um, so be careful with the information you get. And if your company or if you're being kind of lackadaisical with um, personally identifiable information, one, you're not going to make it into Europe, right? The U.S., ugh, whatever. We, we don't care. And we're stupid because we don't care. Um, but making it into Europe, if you're not careful with, you know, PII is incredibly difficult. Um, two, People don't want their information out there. Don't put it out there. Um, so, you know, I'll get off my soapbox, but, um, you know, be very, very careful with your IDs. Be very, very careful with the information you're putting out there. Um, anyway, we'll use a fake UUID. Um, so now we've got an ID on our article. Um, now we can go to our container. Um, and that goes into the imports and ah there we go um that one is going into the imports also the other thing we want to add to the imports is um we want to import oh and look at this if i'd been paying attention i would have even seen how we were doing the imports um, <laughs> um but here we also want to import router link. Um, and we also want that to go into the imports. So with analog imports, yep. 
Um, and so now on the main article, um, we can now add our router link. So our router link will be, and here um, we can do articles um, and then Um, we can just do like main article dot, um, ID, right? And so now that should add the router link to it. If we go take a look, um, when I click, boom, we've jumped into our article and now we can get back to the home page, and we're, you know, now, now we've added our, our linking. And this is, this is why I was so confused about the router link not working earlier, because I do this, I've done this quite a bit. Um, and, you know, a lot of times um, in, in applications, um, you'll see people adding the click, like, like I did before, right? Where you add the click, and then you handle the click, and then you inject the router, and then you navigate to that. Um, but you don't really need to do that. Um, and we can easily add the same thing to our secondary here. Um, so here we can also add our router link equals, and here again, it's going to be articles. And this will be article dot ID. So we're grabbing the article from, you know, the secondary articles here and boom. So now we're in a good spot where we can now navigate to, and I'm saying now a lot, but um, so now if somebody clicks on the screen, we're in a good spot. Um, one thing to check, right, when we're doing this kind of stuff is if we go like, I don't know, our iPhone, right? And we, we scroll, we want to make sure that our scroll stuff isn't breaking, that they have to actually touch, right? Um, uh, and one thing, hmm. yeah, we're, we're good. Um, one thing that I'm curious about is like, on a desktop, right, this makes a lot of sense. And even on a phone, um, you know, you would be, you would think to tap there, right? What doesn't make a lot of sense on a phone, as I'm thinking, um, and you might do it just because, you know, you're used to sites doing this, but if I'm here, I don't see a way to go home, right? Um, and so one of the things we might look at is um, potentially putting in like a, a breadcrumb here that would allow you to go, you know, from the specific article back to the articles route, back to the home, um, instead of having this whole, um, this whole thing being clickable, instead we have breadcrumb. The, the thing we have to think about with breadcrumbs, though, is that the breadcrumbs could, you know, take up space on phones and that's an important thing to remember um, you know you might think oh well just add a hover event well we don't have a hover event on um, phones right um, and that article kind of not I don't know um, anyway so on phones you don't really have a hover event to give that information right um, like if we added a hover here that when, you know, the mouse hovered, well, we, we've already got that event, right? So when they get up here, it turns to a pointer and they're like, oh, right. Oh yeah, I, I know how that works. Um, question is on mobile, what do we do? And I'll have to think through that. Um, but 
one thing to be aware of is, you know, how much of your traffic comes from mobile versus how much of your traffic comes from, you know, desktops or tablets or things like that. Um, well, tablets are the same. Tablets have touch events, right? Um, so really, the only time that hover events even make a lot of sense is if you're using um, if you're using something where you move the pointer. So I, I'm thinking also about like um, like consoles, right? Um, you know, a lot of a lot of web traffic will come from somebody's um, video game consoles like playstations and um, xboxes and wii's and stuff like that um, they typically when you use them you move the mouse around with um you know the little thumbstick right like i've got an xbox controller here and when you're browsing you're moving this right um, so that that's typically the way it works so hover events make sense on consoles where they don't make sense and where a lot of people um, browse the web is on their phones, right? You know, they're just sitting in the doctor's office or sitting someplace else where they're waiting or, um, you know, they're, they've got their tablet with them while they're watching TV and they're, you know, they're reading or doing, you know, playing games on their tablet while the TV's on, right? Um, you see a lot of stuff like that. Um, touch events become an issue for us um, and communicating that they can go back to the home. Um, need to think through that. Um, But yeah, at least now we're to a place um, where we can get there. Um, what we might do is add like a, a hamburger menu um, out here to the side um, that, you know, will have like the home navigation. But one thing we, we don't have is a way for somebody is, is a way for somebody to get to all of our articles. Um, and right now that's not a big deal, um, you know, but um, right now we're, we're listing articles, but we may want to limit this, right? Because if we've got 500 articles, we don't want to list 500 articles here. We also don't want to wait for that query to come back before we display our page. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of reasons why we want to keep this front page quick. The other thing we might want to do is limit it to, um, I don't know, we could be, we could even be smart about it. Um, and depending on the size, right? Because we do have this breakpoint observer now um, that we're using in the main article. So this breakpoint service could tell us um, the size of their screen. Um, and then based on the size of their screen, we could come back with, um, just enough articles to fill their screen, right? Because we know the size of this, we know the size of these. Um, and so we could come back and say, oh yeah, um, I need a main article and six articles for the screen size, right? Um, but if we shrink it just a little bit, then you know it might be a main article and you know four articles or something like that. Um, so, um, well, and here we're always doing just six articles, um, regardless of screen size. Um, so that that's another thing to you know consider as we're as we're going through this is um, how do we do stuff like that? Um, it, it really depends on how we want to display our article. I, I don't think using the breakpoint service is the right way to go, but maybe only the main article and six articles here, and then have a link for the rest of the articles uh, would be a good way to go. Or the other op. The other thing is maybe we have the main article for four of the most recently written articles and then at the bottom, um, or we could still do six, and at the bottom we have a footer, um, and that footer displays um, things very, very similar to like um, how the Angular blog does it, right? So if we go to blog.angular.io, um, so this is done with Medium, um, but you know they they display their main article here, right? Um, and then they've got nine articles, so they do ten articles, and then down at the bottom they've got links to the archives and stuff like that, right? Um, or the latest stories, um, where you know you're into more of a 
scroll-based approach. Um, so, um, and here th they do the same thing where navigation to home is there. Um, we go 12 and we go to a mobile view. Um, it's still the same thing. So maybe me worrying about that, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's trying to redirect me to the, they're, they're sniffing the browser size to tell me. Um, did they just redirect me into? That was at the top. So when I go in here and I go into like the signal inputs, I lose. I lose the ability to go back to the home. I actually have to use the back button on my um, on my browser. Oh, that's interesting. I don't like that either. Um, I really don't like that. Um, so it looks like this is a is a normal way to do it. Um, I'm just not sure if I'm convinced it's the best way to do it. Um, so, um, we'll need to think through that and figure out what the best way to go is. Um, right now we're in a state where, um, we can get to our articles. Um, one thing I'm not sure about is like accessibility wise, when you hover, there's nothing down here that tells you that this is a link other than the visual feedback. Um, but if you're visually impaired, um, like what do you have, right? Um, what do you have to tell you that there is the ability to navigate here? And that's definitely something we should be thinking about, right? Is um, accessibility. Um, Angular router link accessibility. So um, here's some tips for using router link to improve your accessibility. Uh, use descriptive link text. Uh, we're not using links, right? Click here, um, go to the home page. ARIA label attribute provides a text alternative for the link. Um, Router link active directive adds a class to the link when it is the active link. Yeah, but we, so router link active is nice when you're doing things like um, um, navigation menus or tabs or things like that, right? Um, but that is not what we're looking for. Let's see if the router link itself has some help for accessibility. Um, so you can provide a state. Yeah, we don't really, we aren't using state. Um, we aren't using that. Make it accessible, navigation in Angular. 
Um, anchors to the rescue, impure HTML, we use anchor elements. Yep. Um, so here, current page for cited users, and the step we're going to make sure, yeah. First, we'll need to use the router link active directive. Yep. Some changes to it. Um, dynamic page titles with Angular, did some changes to it. Um, this isn't needed anymore. You can just add title to the routes now. Um, Okay, actually, let, let me be more specific here. If you're Angular, I think 14 and above, you can add. It might be 15 and above. You can add the title to the routes. Below, this is still very um, useful. Um, but current page for unsighted users. Um, so we might need to add some ARIA stuff. Oh, well, that's another thing to call out is I don't know how accessible our page is just from um, focus ability. So if I click here and hit tab, oh, we're good. So we do have the ability to focus um, on our elements. So that's good. Um, but if I hit space, there's right. Um, That is good. We, we do have um, tab focusability, which is really, really good. Um, and actually, we can check this out using Wave Analyzer. Um, we do have 15 alerts. Um, so we're missing a label here on the theme. Um, I believe that's the one that, yeah. This theme doesn't have a label. Um, we skipped a heading level here because we went from H1 to H3, and we can see that here, H1 to H3. Um, then we've got redundant title text, and that's for hovering, right? Um, so that, that helps, you know, when the, when the article's been cut off, we've got stuff there. It's not saying that we're in a bad place, but I don't think it recognizes that we've got a click event here. Interesting. We'll have to think about that. Um, one thing I think we, we could do um, is we could create our own um, we could create our own directive that wraps, um, that, um, that uses directive composition on the, um, on the router link directive. Um, and we could expose the, the router link, you know, the way it is. Um, but on top of that, we could use, um, we could use ARIA attributes to let people know that we've got navigation going on. Um, so definitely something to think about there. Um, but we've, we're definitely, I keep saying definitely, I keep saying now a lot. Um, and these are things that you, um, that you realize as you, um, as you stream, you become hyper aware of how you talk. Um, and um, bum is a bad one too. Don't, don't ever become aware of saying, um, or you will, uh, <laughs> anyway, we've got these, we've got these articles, um, uh, and there I go, I'm saying, um, again, and now I'm hyper aware of it because I just said, don't become hyper aware of saying, um, but we've got these articles and they navigate how we want them to, uh, 
So we will actually probably need to call it here for the day. Yeah, it's 12.30 my time. I think this is a good stopping point. Tomorrow, I actually want to create this article page itself. We'll have uh, kind of, you know, a main image if it exists. We'll have a title. And then we'll have the article itself. We might add some stuff on the side. We might add abilities to comment, things like that. We'll, we'll take a look at that. And... What are articles if people can't give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down or some other silly emoji uh, and then tell you how horrible you, you wrote or how well you wrote or uh, correct? Like, you know, I, I'm being facetious here, but I've actually had people write and tell me, you know, in your article, you said this. Technically, it's this. And comments like that are when, when frame, well, comments like that are extremely helpful because they allow people producing content to fix their content. Um, and they, you know, they, they allow you to not look quite as bad. Um, you know, if people go look at the article and they, they see in the comment that somebody corrected you and then you're like, oh yeah, thank you. And then you made the edits and, you know, you call the edits out and say, hey, based on this, it's a very healthy way to go, right? I was going to say when comments like that when done um, when done properly, but it's not even that. Comments like that are helpful. Um, if you want people to respond positively, then maybe write your comments in a way that is um, that will be received well. You know, don't hey dummy, you were so stupid. Don't you know that if you do X, Y, and Z, right? Comments like that are often not received well and likely to be deleted. Uh, you know, content creators are out there doing this for free and after a while of getting a whole bunch of hey dummy comments you start to just be like yeah delete 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 right um and you know then people get angry because you're deleting comments but really you're just tired of seeing them uh, so it, if you want to engage with a content creator um keep it positive and you'll get you'll have positive interactions right um you know Instead of saying, hey, dummy, don't you know? Instead, you could be like, you know, I, I read your article. Great job. I noticed that you said, and then quote what they said, and then say, you know, I, I think that X, Y, and Z is actually the case, or, you know, something like that, where you're not attacking them personally, you know, hey, dummy. You're not um, attacking their knowledge. Don't you know that, right? Things like that, um, you know. You may not realize that you're you're attacking them so much in, in the way you write. If you write, you know, hey, dummy, don't you know that? But, um, you know, people might take it that way. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's call it here for the day. Um, I'll be back tomorrow night. We will actually work on the articles like i said we'll we'll make the articles look decent uh and at that point the only other thing we've got to figure out is how we want to you know i think we might settle on um we might settle on well i'm curious because as soon as i shut this down it becomes really big um one way we could do that is at really big sizes, we could add margins, right? And so um, that, that's one possibility. And that's, that's the other thing, right? Um, I keep saying I'm going to end, but this is an important thing to do when you're, when you're designing. Make sure you look at your, what you're building at different sizes, you know? Um, if I get used to seeing it at this size, this size doesn't look bad to me, right? Um, but as soon as we go here, I'm like, oh no, there's a whole bunch of wasted space here, right? And then immediately my first, my first thought was, well, how do we fix all the wasted space? Oh, we waste more space, right? We, we, we cut it down so that the content looks good. Um, is that the right way to go? Probably not. Uh, what we could probably do is, 
in the case where we're this big, uh, we could then go with three articles across the top. Um, and so, you know, we might go with the 10 articles just like Angular did. But we'll, we'll, we'll think about that next time. Um, anyway, thank you guys, everybody. Um, and yeah, Marcus, thank you for being here. Um, and um, we will see you guys all tomorrow when we get in and, you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're getting towards the part where we actually need to use something like Contentful. And I, I, I'm, I'm saying Contentful, I don't know what we're gonna use. But we're going to need to use some sort of um, CRM to inject the content into our blogs. Um, so we'll take a look at that next time. Um, but thank you everybody for being here.